I discovered the secrets of Blood Meridian while reading it backwards, and I've heard whispers for years in the Meridians about mirrors within Blood Meridian. And now having read Blood Meridian backwards, I can tell you guys that there are over 60 mirrors within Blood Meridian. And a lot of us like to think of Blood Meridian as a violent Western novel or maybe a historical novel. Some may think it's a highbrow literary fiction novel exemplifying the King James literary style. However, I am here with proof, with the receipts, that Blood Meridian is actually a postmodernist palindrome. And you may be asking, Ian, what the hell is a palindrome? Well, it is a sequence of symbols, numbers, phrases, or a, or a story that can be read the same whether it's forwards or backwards. And I'm going to show you guys with your copy of Blood Meridian the literary mirrors that exist all throughout Blood Meridian. And it doesn't matter what copy you have, whether it's the Modern Library, the Random House, the Vintage Random, the Echo Press, they are all set with the same page numbers. And obviously Cormac wasn't there laying out the printed copy of the novel. So I'm going to give myself anywhere from zero to five pages of margin of error to identify these mirrors. Because when he had this big jumbled draft, he didn't know how they would exactly mirror, but that they would be in the general opposite vicinity of each other. So a mirror, for instance, in the literary sense is, let's say three pages in the novel, which we're about to discuss right now, there is mentions of a meteor shower. And then if we go to the end of the novel and we go three pages from the back, what if there is mentions of a meteor storm? That is a literary mirror. Is it a coincidence? Maybe, but when you have 60 of them, throughout a novel, it doesn't seem to be such a coincidence anymore. And with this framework of reading Blood Meridian, the possibilities are suddenly endless. I can't even fathom them myself. So let's start with the meteor shower that if we, if you go to page three of your copy of Blood Meridian should be there. And it starts, quote, the Leonids, they were called, God, how the stars did fall. I looked for blackness, holes in the heaven. So now let's go to the ending of Blood Meridian before the epilogue. And if you go to where it says the end, which for me is on page 349, and we turn back, so one page, two pages, and three pages again, we see in the second paragraph, he stood in the yard, stars were falling across the sky, myriad and random, speeding along brief vectors from their origins in night to their destinies in dust and nothingness. That's an exact match of page three to three pages from, you know, the end. Very close. Once again, it may be a coincidence, but let's continue with stuff just in chapter one, which there are 12 occurrences and 12 mirrors from the start to the end, which really symbolizes the idea of an eternal reoccurrence within Blood Meridian, Meridian, excuse me, which I'm going to talk about in my next video after this one, which is using this information to give a whole new interpretation of Blood Meridian's epilogue. So look out for that video because it's going to be fire. And while we're talking about it, if you want a Blood Meridian shirt or want to join my Blood Meridian course, which is within the Cormac McCarthy course, the only place on the internet or in the world where you will find massive breakdowns of Cormac McCarthy's books and a bunch of other cool topics. The links are down in the description below. Cormac McCarthy course is $5 a month. That's a way you can support the channel if you don't care about that. And if you don't care about streetwear, you just being here and listening is more than enough. And let's hop into the second mirror. So once again, we are on page three of the novel and in line sentence number two, it says he is pale and thin. So now let's flip back to the ending of Blood Meridian. And if we look two pages from the end at the last paragraph of 348, it reads, and now in double time, bowing to the ladies, huge and pale and hairless, like an enormous infant. So that is a massive mirror. See the child. The child is hairless and he is an infant and he's an infant like an enormous infant. The child is small. The judge is huge. Both of them are pale. And if you look at the sequence, actually the words are reversed to mimic a mirror in the description, which is just absolutely insane that Cormac is putting these things in. This is him understanding unconscious responses. And this is one of the reasons why the ending of Blood Meridian is so famous and why the start is so famous. Because if you finish the book, you have eternally reoccurred. 
within your own journey as a reader. Who would have thought that McCarthy was going meta on us? McCarthy is an OG postmodernist. On page three, the kid, uh, the child's father lies and drink. And then on page 348 again, many of the dancers, excuse me, quote, many among the dancers were staggering drunk, end quote. So right here we have a conundrum, right? Because that may just be a coincidence. The other two, those are pretty apparent. But for some of these that aren't as hardcore, you just have to kind of assume that he's mimicking the scenes. He's mimicking a lot of the aspects of consciousness because, yes, the kid's father is probably a jerk and people at bars and who are hanging around the judge are drinking. But I'm guessing from what I can see, McCarthy got copies of both of these different sides at some point in the drafting and tried to introduce as many elements as he could without being too obvious because it's taken a long time for people to figure this out. It's 2023, and it's making a lot of this is making its first appearance on the biggest video sharing platform in the world. On page four, there is a reference to a kitchen house, which mirrors the standalone shed, the Jakes, and both, when they are referenced, have cold air surrounding them. And at the start of the novel, the kid's mother dies while giving birth. And if we transport ourselves about eight pages back, which is a bit of a stretch, McCarthy says, quote, it's all over, she said. It's all over. Do you believe it's all over, son? And right here and a couple pages later, later, which marks the mirror a little bit better, the judge calls the kid son. And there's a whole theory that the judge is the kid's father. But when he calls him son, that line, he's saying that you are going to die. Do you think that it's all over? And the mom died giving birth by releasing the kid and the judge is going to kill the kid by consuming him. Both acts lead to the, the, the destruction of the kid's lineage or, you know, kin, if you want to say. The kid and the bear are both shot two different times. The bear is shot while he is dancing, and the kid is shot because he is fighting, which are two of the main themes of Blood Meridian and the judge, who likes to bring together dancing and war as kind of one. At the start and at the end of the novel, in at the same succession, the kid is taken care of by different women in an upstairs room. And the only reference, excuse me, the word caught is used two different times within the novel, and it's used in these instances. And for the pages of that, 4 and 332 have a perfect mirror. And there seems to be a lot of kind of inner mirrors with Reverend Green and the, and the ending scenes of the novel. For instance, the word opinion is used two different times within the novel, one from Reverend Green and one by the judge. However, the word childlike is also the same with Reverend Green. The tent meeting is serene and strangely childlike, and at the end of the novel with the whores, they are described as childlike and nude. At this uh, part with Reverend Green at the start of the novel, the judge instigates the shooting, and, you know, the chaos that ensues with Reverend Green. At the end of the novel, the judge once again instigates the men who start shooting in the tavern. When we are at the start of the novel, after the fight, Toadvine asks the kid, I, I think he asks, like, do you want to call it quits? And at the end of the novel, when the kid is now the man, the judge asks him once again, do you believe it's all over, son? And they are, in terms of page nation, mirrored. Which, you know, just as a side note, this is kind of trippy because... Where do we go with this? Like, give me some of your theory and analysis. Like, I have I figured out about this a couple hours ago. I was like, I could sit here for a couple hours and try to come up with a theory, and I will. But if you guys want to help me out and like give me some fuel, then let let's let let's make that happen. Because after this, once again, I'll be making the prologue video, and that probably won't be out until tomorrow. And so, a lot of that information could help me in this further analysis. Once again, with only a, a couple pages of air, when the hotel is burning at. The start of the novel, the judge is watching the kid. At the end of the novel, the, the kid or the man, whatever we want to call him, sees the judge through the smoke. And so this is just an introduction to some of these in the novel. I'm going to go over the rest in the Cormac McCarthy course. But before we end, I want to give you guys kind of the big one, one of the central ones of the entire story. And this is a quote from Christopher Lee Flores, excuse me, Forbes who's written about Blood Meridian being a palindrome in terms of the hats in Blood Meridian, which is pretty cool. And quoting him, At the gang's return as heroes to Chihuahua City to be paid in gold, that Judge Holden enters Governor Engel Angel Trias's banquet carrying such a perfectly spliced hat. 
The judge's hat is metaphorically the novel, and this is the gang's, the kids, meridian, a high-status moment. If the novel's a palindrome, this is the central image, and is in some metaphorical relation to Holden's two hats and money on Nagodoche's bar, and to the Tyrolean showman's hat of coins, which is at the end of the novel. So we will explore that in another video, but this is just a teaser for you guys. That at the central of the novel is the meridian with the hat, with the big celebration, which in terms of page numbers lands exactly in the middle. So check out my video on Cormac McCarthy's prologue, uh, excuse me, epilogue of Blood Meridian and it being breaking down when it comes out. Peace.